Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to my YouTube channel. The US saw a record-breaking spike in unemployment in 2020. Actually, unemployment was higher back in the 1930s during the Great Depression, but back then it took two years for unemployment to get around 15%. In 2020, it took two months. And the new numbers just came out last week, so now the unemployment rate is 8.4%. That's better, but is it good? And how is unemployment measured? Well, it's time to find out. In the US, crunching the unemployment rate numbers is the job of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS. The first Friday of every month, they post the numbers and issue a report. Now, you can call me an econ geek, but that report is super interesting and includes a lot of the stuff you need to know to pass an econ class. So like I said, the unemployment rate in August of 2020 fell to 8.4%. In other words, things are getting better, but they're not good. The equation for the unemployment rate is the number of people who are unemployed divided by the number of people in the labor force times 100. In your class, you gotta feel comfortable calculating the unemployment rate, but there's a bunch of other things that you gotta know. The first thing is that not everyone without a job counts as unemployed. The unemployment numbers only look at people who are actively looking for work. So if you stop looking for a job or if you don't even want a job, you're not considered unemployed because you're not part of the labor force. The labor force is the number of people that are actively looking for a job or have a job. So the unemployed and the employed, they're at least 16 years old, not institutionalized, in other words, not in jail or in a mental hospital and not in the military. And the labor force participation rate is the number of people in the labor force divided by the working age population times 100. Now I know I covered that really quick, so here's a recap and a visual. The total population includes everyone, including little kids and super old people that just can't work. When you take them out, you get the working age population, but that includes people who don't want a job, like full-time students or stay-at-home moms. And when you take them out, you end up with the labor force and the labor force participation rate. And it's inside the labor force that you see the number of people who are actively looking for a job, but they don't have one, and that gives you the unemployment rate. And of course, that unemployment rate can go up or down, and that shows you what's happening in the overall economy. Simple, but there's still a couple of problems. The first one is that part-time workers are considered fully employed. So if you have a job working 40 hours a week and that gets cut down to only 10 hours a week, you're still considered fully employed and you're not unemployed even if you're looking for another job to make ends meet. The BLS actually tracks all this stuff, but the point is if people are moved involuntarily to part-time work and they're underemployed, that still doesn't affect the official unemployment numbers. And the second issue is when people stop looking for a job. I can't do this anymore, man. My head's about to explode. These individuals are called discouraged workers and they're no longer considered unemployed because they left the labor force. So if a chunk of people leave the labor force because they're so frustrated, they're so angry, they can't get a job, that'll actually cause the unemployment rate to fall. And that would actually make the economy look like it's doing better even though it's totally not. Again, the BLS tracks all this, but it's something to keep in mind. The official unemployment rate is good, it's important, but you have to actually look at the numbers to figure out what's happening in the real economy. Got it? Kind of. In the beginning, I mentioned that this spike in unemployment was record-breaking, but this was too. Before the pandemic, the US had the lowest unemployment rate since the 1950s, but notice it didn't get down to 0%. Economists focus on three types of unemployment, and two of them always exist, even when the economy is doing great. The first type is frictional unemployment. That's temporary unemployment, like when people switch jobs or when they first enter the labor force. Did you hear I finally graduated? Yeah, and just a shade under a decade too, all right. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. I know, they're called doctors. This type's always gonna exist because people are gonna be leaving their jobs and switching their jobs, but remember, this is temporary. The second type is structural unemployment, and that's long-term unemployment because workers don't have the right skills. Technological improvements make some jobs obsolete, and that causes structural unemployment. Sometimes a robot just does it better. Again, these two types of unemployment always exist, and together, they make up the natural rate of unemployment. This is the amount of unemployment that exists even when the economy is doing great. So when we have frictional and structural unemployment, we're at full employment. Now that's actually a little different for every country, but in the US, the natural rate of unemployment is somewhere between four and 6%. So what's happening here when we're above 6%? Well, that's the third type of unemployment, cyclical unemployment. This is the result of a downturn in the economy. Workers aren't losing their jobs because they're between jobs or because machines do it better. They're losing their job because of a recession. During the pandemic, people couldn't go out to eat, so restaurant owners had to lay off their servers and their cooks, and that caused a spike in unemployment. 
that cyclical unemployment. Now I've got something that's gonna help you remember this idea of frictional and structural and cyclical unemployment. A quick search on the internet will show you there's kind of an unofficial icon or symbol of 2020. It's a dumpster fire, and to help you remember these concepts I have for you, a dumpster. Unemployment is like a dumpster. It's just a fact of life. It's ugly and it's always there. Sometimes people are gonna get canned. So having a dumpster around like frictional and structural unemployment, it's totally normal, it's natural. But a dumpster fire, that's something different and that's what we have here in 2020, cyclical unemployment. But don't go anywhere, there's still two things we have to do. Number one, if you like this video, if I'm helping you learn and love economics, please subscribe and hit that like button. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell so you can see all the new videos I'm making for you this semester. And the second thing we have to do, it's time for a pop quiz. <laughs> At the end of these videos, I put a few practice multiple choice questions to make sure you're actually getting it. Also, if you need more help, take a look at my ultimate review packet. It has a practice sheet. It's gonna help you make sure you can do the calculations for unemployment, labor force participation rate, and all that stuff. The link is in the description below, and the best part, it's free to start right now. Good luck on these practice questions. Make sure to look in the comments below for the right answers. Thanks for watching my videos. Until next time.